So a while back I came across this uh, uh, M5 bayonet blade. Uh, as you can tell, had no handle. Um, the blade itself was in really good shape, and but it, as soon as I saw it, I thought, man, I'd like to uh, make a uh, trench knife out of that. And I thought, well, this little stud should be real easy to remove. And so I got it, and I immediately decided to start filing down the uh, plug on this side, figuring I'd be able to knock it out. Um, that's not the case at all. Um, it's not just going to pop out simply because I've taken the time to file that down and then hit it a couple times. I think it was basically welded into place, and uh, it's in there really good. And uh, <clears throat> it's really quite hard steel, so it's going to be a lot of fun getting it out, especially without using power tools. I know what you can say. You can say, well, why don't you just go ahead and get a Dremel on one of those little uh, cut-off wheels and cut it off. Well, I tried that. It broke. Not once, but twice. And so it's off to using a hacksaw. And so I'm placing it in my table here. Let's see if I can get this in place so you can see it. Tighten it up. And get the blade in place, hold it still, and start cutting away. And it doesn't sound pleasant, so I think uh, we'll just show you the finished results. One has to wonder if uh, the filings are from the hacksaw or from the stud. We'll find out. I'm getting there. Looks like I'm about halfway through. Not sure how well it's going to go. Okay, so how are we doing? That's how far I've cut so far. Maybe a little over half. It's uh, it's taking a little less time than I thought it was going to. Uh, but uh, it's a bit of an effort. Uh, especially with just a hacksaw. Okay, a little closer, a little closer, maybe three quarters of the way, two thirds. Still uh, slow going. This is about every two minutes I'm uh, stopping and uh, videoing a little bit. The cat doesn't like the noise. I'm sweating a bit here. It's not easy. I should have probably set that file down a while ago. Uh, I tell you what, man, this is not a lot of fun, but uh, it'll be worth it when it's done. Um, the blade is kinking up a bit. I've had to tighten it a couple times. Taking another break from uh, videoing. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Would you believe it? It's almost through. And that thing is still not budging. I could not knock it loose or anything like that. It's just as tight as can be still. It's, uh, we're talking about some really tough steel here. Might have a breakthrough in a minute. Gonna see if I can pop it a little open with a screwdriver. I'm thinking maybe if I can get a screwdriver in there and lift it up a bit, I'll be able to get the saw blade in there a little better. We'll see. Kids, don't try this at home. Hey! Popped it off.
So, there we go. About, sorry about that. About five minutes of work, maybe 10. Uh, got it off on both sides, but I have to file this down a little bit on this side. But now I just have a straight guard going across. And now I just gotta go and figure out what I'm gonna do for a handle. I don't know if I'm gonna go with bone, leather, wood, something, but uh, something to make a nice uh, uh, M5 trench knife instead of an M3 trench knife. Should be fun. Well, it can never be as easy as I expect it to be. Uh, so I've been working on this M5 uh, uh, trench knife that I'm working on for months. I got the uh, thing, uh, the little bayonet stud removed, and uh, all I've been trying to do is figure out what I was going to use for a handle material. And um, so I saw online somebody had um, these uh, buffalo um, bone handles that they were selling. And uh, so I thought I'd give it a try. The, the length was perfect. They said it was uh, five inches long, which is a good length for a knife handle. Uh, and then they said that uh, the hole in the middle was uh, three quarters of an inch, so 0.75. Uh, and well, this is 0.65 across, so shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, except um, the hole in the middle is not 0.75. Let's see what the hole in the middle actually is. So here's my caliper. I can uh, open this up and let's try and get it to the widest it's going to be. Um, the widest I'm going to be able to get it is 0.57. So 0.57 is just the opposite of 0.75. Um, uh, basically 5 eighths of an inch, a little bit smaller than I need. I needed 0.65 at least. And, um, well, they lied. Um, the overall diameter they said was, uh, um, an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter or something like that well it's less than an inch in diameter so going to be really tricky and uh, like I said right here is 0 0.62 well let's see here let's get it right okay so 0 0.63 let's get it out there 0 0.62 you can see that it's going to be a little bit larger and uh, down here 0 0.61 and what I've done is I've started uh, grinding away down here and now I've got it to 0 0.60 and I'm going to have to get it even smaller than that so, but I've got it to 0 0.60 and so that's what I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to grind all of this down so that I can finally fit the bone in there uh, it'll look nice once it's done I think um, I'm hoping it will at least um, feels good in the hand a little bit small but not bad um, and then I'm thinking I'm going to dye the bone a different color than white even though I'm a white smooth bone kind of guy um, I just think this will look better if it's uh, white we'll see or something other than white but we'll see um, but talk about disappointing the only positive is if you see here with the snap on the sheath perfect fit there so that'll be nice um, but let's see how it goes. First, I've got to do is uh, get the old Dremel out. And I've got to grind this down so that I can get this to slide all the way in. And as you can see, so far, I've managed to get it to go in, uh, what? About a quarter of an inch tops right there. Maybe three-eighths of an inch. Uh, got my work cut out for me. Going to be noisy. Going to be long. And no, I'm not going to record all that. I'll just show you uh, the tools that I use and uh, give you a rough estimate on how long it took me to grind that down. I'll probably grind this edge down a little bit too so that it'll be a little rounded. Uh, and then I gotta just go almost down to that portion there all the way down the whole length. So I've gotta take off like an eighth of an inch of that uh, with a grinding stone and all I've got is a Dremel. It's gonna be really tricky. Okay, just excuse everything in the background. We're talking about this right now. This is the uh, M5 that I've been working on. So, I needed to get this from 16 millimeters down to 
10 millimeters so that it would fit into this white smooth bone handle. So after 72 days and 14 Dremel bits, I finally got it done. No, not actually. Uh, I tried it with a Dremel bit, I failed miserably. Uh, Talk to my uh, nephew who actually has a forge and, uh, and a grinder and everything else. He took this down uh, in a couple hours uh, using his grinder from six millimeters, or he took six millimeters off of it, two on the top, four on the bottom, so that the handle, this uh, bone handle will fit in there. It's a little loose. I've got to figure out how I'm going to tighten it up and everything. But that's where we're at right now with my M5 trench knife. So once again, I stupidly do something without starting the recording first. Um, I ended up taking uh, and putting two pieces of leather here. Uh, you can see little scrap pieces of leather that I have basically trimmed and cut to fit into the handle. See, I cut this stuff off uh, actually using a little Spyderco clipping tool. And um, the purpose of that is so that I can get this bone handle to go on here and have a little bit of a spacer. So I'll have a little leather spacer in between the uh, guard and the bone handle. And that will help the uh, bone handle uh, rest uh, more securely against the, uh, the uh, cross guard. And then uh, you can see I've marked the spot where I will need to drill a hole through the bone. Notice, boom. You might not be able to see it anyway. There is a, definitely, the spot is right there inside the bone. Um, so I'll need to drill a hole through that so that I'll be able to uh, uh, pin the bone onto the hand, uh, to the uh, the hidden tang, the little bit of a push tang that's left, and uh, get this thing into gear. And like I said, I still need to figure out what I'm going to use for an end cap. But we are getting along, and uh, this is going to be pretty cool when I finish it, and then I just got to do some rough cleaning and everything and make it look uh, nice and pretty. But uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, little uh, theater knife or trench knife or whatever you want to call it, uh, made out of an old. M5-1 uh, bayonet for an M1 uh, Grand and that uh, when I got it, it had no handle so I figured I should do something else with it. Oh, and then what I'm also going to do is file this smooth so it'll look a little nicer and everything uh, once it's matched up with the bone. So there's the hole that I'm going to have to pin through. I've got the leather in place, set the handle in place, Get it about where I need it and then I put a dot there so I'm going to put a hole through the bone in that spot and I'm going to have to do it on both sides. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drill the hole on one side and then make sure that it is matched up and then I will try and drill straight through. Uh, if it is matched up I'll drill th straight through on the other side of the bone and hopefully not crack it. We'll see how it all works out. And so what I've got is my punch here that I'm going to put in the spot and I'm going to actually do the initial drilling with the punch so that the um, the drill bit will not slip around. I, I have better control with um, with the punch on my uh, 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 milk knife, my uh, demo knife, whatever you want to call it. So that's where I'm going to get the little indented spot in the bone so I can drill. And so now I've got the little dent there and I'm just going to put my drill in place and uh, hope for the best and start drilling. We'll see how it goes. Not the sharpest drill bit, I probably could have used something a little sharper. I'm also not drilling extremely fast because I don't know if it's going to crack or not. I don't want to crack it, it's the only handle I've got. So I start with a small hole. I can always make the hole bigger 
uh, if I need to do that. But I'm going to start small and then try to make it bigger if I need to make it bigger. And let's we'll see how it goes. Okay, so five minutes later, and I do have the hole all the way through. And uh, as you can tell by this paper clip, it does go all the way in because, um, as you can tell, the handle is gripping. And it is hitting the right spot. Now it's moving here because the pin does not go all the way through. Once I have the pin going all the way through, it will uh, more securely keep the handle in place. Uh, and also, it'll be the right size pin, so I'm not going to be using a paper clip. But uh, the hole is aligned. It is in the right spot. So I will now be able to drill all the way through to the other side and punch the hole straight through the handle. Uh, and that's the, the next step. Get a hole all the way through to the other side. It should erase the little black dot on this side uh, once I'm done. And then it's just a matter of getting the hole drilled out wide enough to fit this hole here. Which shouldn't be too difficult. In any case, I hope not. And yeah, all I'm using is a cordless screwdriver and a drill bit. Uh, nothing fancy. Uh, so you don't need a big shop to do what I'm doing here. Okay, so where I'm at right now, I've sanded this down a bit so it looks a little better. I've got the handle. I can put it on. I have to make sure I'm lining it up right. If I put it on wrong, it's not going to uh, fit flush. See, this side fits flush. Turn it this way and it's not quite as flush especially if i'm trying to keep it straight so i've got to get that straightened out make sure i do it right the first time i've got my pen i've marked where i'm going to need to cut it down to um, but it will fit through and what i plan on doing is having the pen a little bit recessed into the handle so I will cover that up with the putty also. And what I'll end up doing is I'm going to scrape some of the bone out from inside here with a file. And I will use that powdered bone, mix it in on the top of the uh, putty so that it will blend in better with the color of the uh, bone here. Now, I'll be using this Plumber's Epoxy. I've got two tubes of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Fill in the front portion here, shove this down into there, pin it on, and then start pushing more putty down into here um, once the uh, pin is in place and everything. And then for the, uh, the back of it, the pommel, to cover up the hole so you don't see all the putty, I've got these uh, Chinese good luck coins with the little hole in the middle, the square in the middle. And I'm going to put one of those over the back, covering up all the uh, putty and everything. And then just pass a, a brass bolt or a brass rivet into there. Screw it down and um, hopefully that will work to keep the uh, pommel in place. And I will also probably put a little uh, um, like Gorilla Glue or something against that too to make sure that it is holding it nice and tight. And then I will do some more sanding, get everything matched up real well, and see how it goes. Uh, but that's uh, the plan. We'll see how it goes, and uh, we'll see more in the video. And I will show you a couple of the step-by-step -step photos, or maybe if I can do some video of it, I'll also do that too. Well, I guess it's time for me to actually get started on this and actually do something. And uh, so first step is to... Take some of this putty. Notice I'm wearing gloves because you should wear gloves when you're using this crap. And I uh, got my electric mate. Nice little sheep foot blade. Actually more of a, I guess it could be considered a ram's foot blade. Considering it's wider at the top, skinnier down here. Uh, I'm going to have to cut off a bit of this stuff. Now what you do is you roll these things together. Oh crap, this one is going to be gray. I was hoping it would be drying white, but it, I'm sure it's going to dry gray. Uh, well, that's life. Hopefully you will not see any of it. Um, does mean there's going to be a problem with the holes, so. And what you got to do is you mix this crap up. And when you're 
combining the two ingredients, um, the stuff actually starts doing stuff. And you really have to get it molded into one uniform color. And it's actually easier to do if you're not wearing gloves, but you don't want this crap all over your hands either, so. I do not know how much of it I'm going to need. Um, and now I'm going to turn off the camera for a second while I finish rolling this up. Okay, rolled up and ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mush it around here. Stick to everything. Uh, put it on the handle. And I do not want it uh, really large because when I push the bone down into it, this stuff is going to get gushing down too, um, but it's almost a one-shot deal. If it, if it, and then when it, whatever comes out, I will take uh, my little knife here or my electric mate and trim it all off. And once again, I got to make sure I'm putting this on the right way. See how it is pushing down? So it's taking some of the stuff off. more than I want it to take off actually. Very little of it is staying probably. All right, peel it off. But I have to sand it off too. And I'm going to jam some of this down in here. Get a stick or something and shove it in there onto the back end. And then I got to make sure the handle is all aligned. And then afterwards I can get the pin in there. But uh, stuff is already hardening. So much for the 20 minutes, they said. Okay, so I managed to get it crammed down in there a little bit. So it's grabbing onto the back end of the knife. Um, I've got it there. It looks decent enough. Once I sand it down, it'll look a whole lot better. I got my pen cut the uh, size. And what I'm going to probably do is get some uh, Gorilla Glue and set this pen in there. I am not going to bother using this gray stuff because I don't want that showing on the bone. Uh, the pen will be a little bit recessed and uh, what I will do is I will take uh, some of this bone off of this one, file it down, get some powder and everything, and I'm going to mix that in with Gorilla Glue and fill in the holes around the pen. Uh, but it does feel like it's already setting up tight. so. The uh, stuff is working, so that's the, uh, the plus side. Uh, so I'm that much closer to having my, uh, my trench knife finished. This stuff all set, sets completely is I'm going around with my electric make Barlow and uh, I'm getting this crap off my bone. I don't want it staining the bone. And then I will uh, get it all set up. Make sure it's all nice and tight. Okay, I once again started without actually uh, filming and basically you can see what I'm doing here. I've got the pin in place and uh, you can see here that it's kind of got some goop on it. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm taking Gorilla Glue and I'm just dropping it on top of it. And then I've got the other piece of bone here and I'm taking a knife and I'm scraping the bone loose and I'm dumping it on where the stuff is. Get a bunch of powder. And then I uh, drop it on there and smooth it over it. I'm gonna have to get it off the blade now, but, and then tap it in. 
And so what's basically happening is the bone and the Gorilla Glue is mixing together to fill the hole so it'll all match up. And then I'm going to have to get it off the knife blade too, which is not fun, but better than trying to get it off my fingertips. Oh yeah, another reason to have something like this around because uh, this is like just a 4 or $5 desk knife, but it's got a sharp enough blade, probably made out of 420. As you can tell there, if you can see it, uh, Pakistan. Uh, but you see what I'm doing with it. I really would not want to do that with a $200 knife uh, because I'm getting it off of the blade using, you know, I got to scrape all that crap off the blade. And who wants to ruin a good knife? Actually, it is a pretty good knife considering it's doing what it's supposed to do. So even an inexpensive knife can be a good knife. It's just not an expensive knife. And so now the glue is done and I'm just using a simple emery board to sand it smooth. Nothing fancy, you know, kind of thing you use on your fingernails and stuff. But if it files down a fingernail, it should be alright for bone, right? So as you can see, one side has the pin more exposed than the other side. And you just see that little bit of a flaw in the bone there where the pin is. Uh, so the pin is visible. I'll know where it is if I need to pop it out. Um, I'd have to pound it out with a hammer or something. But uh, nice and tight. Handle is nice and tight. Everything is nice and straight. All I got to do now is get the uh, pommel in place. Okay, so next up is the uh, pommel. Uh, from early on, I was thinking of using some kind of coin, and I grabbed these uh, Chinese good luck coins. I got plenty of them. I mean, it's like 10 for a buck or something like that. Uh, I was thinking of this mainly because, uh, like, um, Korea, Vietnam, and stuff like that, uh, where the Actually, the M5 did not come out in, during, in uh, time for the Korean War. It came out right after the Korean War, but they would have probably seen a little bit of service in Vietnam. So a nice little Chinese coin would be kind of cool, I thought. Um, I might be able to put one or two on the back because they're, they're not extremely thin, much skinnier than a nickel or something. I was hoping they'd be a little thicker. But then what I'll do is I will uh, pass this screw through here and drill it in place. And what I'm going to have to do though is basically uh, tape the uh, coin to the back of the handle and then I'll drill right through the middle of the hole here so that I'll be able to pass the screw through. So here we go. Get the uh, coin taped in place. And I'll tape in place. Cut the hole here. Do want to try and get it as straight as possible going in there and i want to make sure everything is covered okay so now lined about the center and start drilling again this is just a cordless screwdriver i'm using and i'm drilling into that epoxy i put in there before so you can see that it's a lot harder than you think it is and eventually I'll hit the pan of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the shaft of the knife because it's like so it's thinner also. Now uh, let's see how that worked. I'm going to have to back it up. So it's definitely going in. Yeah, we got in quite a distance. Okay, so let's see how it screws on. Well, it was a bit of an epic failure trying to do this with three coins uh, because um, the uh, tang came so far forward that uh, the screw ended up uh, catching it on here and so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to repack this with that uh, gray plumber's putty uh, fill it all the way to the top drill a new hole in there and um, make a second attempt at it plus I'm probably going to have to use more than three uh, three of these or I'm going to have to uh, get a shorter screw I'll probably end up just grabbing a shorter screw. Well, I'm racing the clock now. I basically filled it up with the putty and I just went and grabbed a screw that I can put in there. I'm going to try and drill the hole while the putty is still wet. Hopefully 
see it's deep enough and I can scrape off the excess putty here should have kept both gloves on uh, could not find the right type of screw got so I've got a silver screw or a aluminum screw or something there uh, holding the uh, brass coin in place uh, once it all dries it should be solid as a rock I've only got one coin there um, that way if I need to take it apart I can take it apart but uh, there we have it you got your Chinese coin screw putty hopefully it'll hold um, and once it's dry in about 20 minutes I'll see if I can back out the screw I have a feeling I might not be able to we'll see three more coins or two more coins on it so uh, we'll see if that holds or not and if it does then I will uh, uh, I might find somebody who has a soldering iron and uh, solder all those coins together we'll see if that'll work that might be interesting in any case right now they're a little loose but we'll find out how it'll work I'm not too concerned it's really just something to cover all that gray putty Okay, I wasn't happy with the bone, so I went and soaked it in a solution of hot tea. Basically, it was uh, four cups of boiling water with uh, seven Lipton tea bags. Uh, and I poured it into a container, and then uh, the bone soaked in that for about 24 hours and brought out a lot of nice character in it. You see all the little cracks in the bone and everything. You can see where the filler was used around the pen. And uh, same here. Um, I can live with that. Also, I probably should have done this before attaching it to the uh, to the knife. Uh, I really wasn't thinking um, because you see the color here leaking out from the uh, the leather, and the leather is also a little darker because it's been tanned. And uh, at one time, this blade was just completely covered with black gook because of uh, the tea causing the blade to oxidize and everything and the tannic acid and the tea doing some work on the blade so uh, I ended up having to sand down the blade again but um blade's got a nice a uh, lot of character in it it's got a you can see a lot of the lines in it and stuff I wouldn't say it's like Damascus or anything but you can definitely see that it's got a nice patina to it and the same thing with the cross guard it's got a nice patina to it now I like the way it shows up uh, the brass uh, coin on the end. I'm not crazy about that, but that's the way it's going to be for right now. Eventually, I'll probably change the the butt cap out on it. But um, for right now, I'm going to call it done. So there you have it, my uh, M5 uh, trench knife made from an old M5-1 bayonet blade uh, that's been rehandled with a, uh, a white bone handle that has been um aged using uh tea black tea calling it a day now told you it was a long one thanks for sticking around and uh i'd love to hear what you think about this uh video as well as uh the finished product as i mentioned i'm kind of iffy on the pommel i'm not sure if i like it or not love to hear your opinion on that especially and also the way the bone turned out and also, because I already had uh, M5-1 bayonet in really great shape, I had really no problem taking what was essentially just a blade blank and uh, modifying it into something else. If I had not had an M5-1, I might have tried to restore it to original, but that would have been pretty costly. And in the grand scheme of things, the only reason I was buying the blade for her was the uh, M8 scabbard that was coming with it. But hopefully there's a few tips in this video that'll help people who uh, rehandle blade blanks or uh, repair knives and are on a really strict budget like I am. So that's really why I did this. And uh, I know it's long, but hopefully it was worthwhile for a few people. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats. And if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.